What is up y'all? It's your girl Kayla and we are back with another video. As y'all already know, if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome. I appreciate every single one of y'all who tune into these videos, who interact with them, who like them, who comments on them, who subscribes them, on them, who shares them. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Thank you so much for the brave souls that comments in these videos and like give your own advice and perspective uh, when it comes to, you know, the whatever subject it is regarding the video. Or if you have questions or, you know, certain content, you know, that you want to see related to TTC, thank you so much. I know sometimes it's easy to just sit and watch the video. Sometimes we're too shy to comment. So I get it. I appreciate every single one of y'all regardless. And yeah, so as y'all already know from this title, this is a re-upload, but uh, I wanted to go back through and refilm any of the videos that I have that have poor sound quality. I'm not sure what happened to my mic, but um, you know, the microphone on my camera just suddenly went out. So... I have a new mic and I just want to re-film those before I introduce new content to y'all. I think that's the most responsible thing to do. And yeah, so as y'all know, I already had an insemination back in February and was it January or February? I got to double check that. But I had an IUI at the beginning of this year and yeah, January. So I had my IUI at the beginning of the year and unfortunately it did end in a miscarriage and so I'm on my road to recovery and I will be having an insemination fairly soon. I'm just not going to announce when I do it um, and I'm just going to basically let y'all know everything once you know, I get that positive pregnancy test, I get that positive heartbeat, and my doctor says that I am in the clear. So until that happens, I'm just not going to announce it anymore. Uh, nothing against anybody. All y'all have been so supportive. It was just really hard for me to just go through it and just see all the disappointment every time people saw. And it's just, it wasn't good for me. Um, so... That's why I chose to do it that way. And yeah, so um, I will say though, it, the IUI itself was a success. So I do want to share with y'all the steps that I did for my insemination uh, that were given to me by my sperm bank as well as recommended by my midwife. Um, that way, if you are doing an at-home insemination and you're not getting the same service as my sperm bank, you're able to get that information still. So when you get your vials, it will be in a huge cryo tank. I wish I had a picture. If I do have a picture, I will try my best to input it in the screen somewhere around here. But um, you will get this huge cryo tank. It's very big, the size of a toddler. And you're going to have just a very small vial in there about the size of my pinky, probably about smaller than my pinky actually. And in there you will have your sperm. Inside of that you will have the dry ice. You're not gonna wanna touch that, okay, with your bare hands by any means. Like, do not touch your dry ice. But um, when you pick up your sperm vials or if you're picking them up, you're going to want them to verify your vial there with you at the office. So they'll open up the cryo tank and pull it open, you know, quite really quickly, um, really quickly show you the vial identifier. So it may have the sperm donor's initials and the vial number and um, the number out of sperm that are sperm vials that they have. So you don't know how many sperm vials they have, but the number and sequence. Um, so it'll have all that information. You confirm that with your order slip for the sperm, just like any other lab form that you have. And they confirm you are you. And 
they'll put it back in and zip tie it closed very, very tightly so that the lid does not come out. Um, you wanna make sure that your cryo tank is sitting right side up and that it doesn't tilt over or anything like that. If it does and some of the dry ice does spill out just very quickly, pick your cryo tank back up. This is why we keep the uh, um, zip tie on it so it's nice and sealed and call your sperm bank, let them know what happens. Take pictures if you can, just in case, um, so they can determine whether or not you need to bring the cryo tank back for additional um, dry ice, or if your sperm vial should be fine by the time you're doing your insemination. My cryo tank, the dry ice lasts for five days safely. Uh, I did have a nice little amount of dry ice left after the five days um, because I ended up having my tank like a couple days after I had my insemination just because I wanted to be able to have it for the original video to show y'all what it looks like but um, and I did have some dry ice in there but they do not recommend you try to keep your vial in there for more than five days um, with that same original dry ice that they give you because of course it will dissipate. So um, if you do need to keep it longer than the three to five days worth of dry ice that they put in there, um, just let them know. You will be charged for the extra day rental, um, but they will be able to put more dry ice in there. Make sure your sperm vial is still safe and you can be on your merry way until your IUI. So when it comes time for you to open up the cryo tank, you're gonna pop that zip tie and there is a lid on the tall canister. It almost looks like an oversized metal thermos, but there's a lid. You just take that off, sit it upside down so that the dry ice part, the cold part is sitting up so it's not touching any surfaces. You wanna get some sort of thermal proof glove on. They recommended latex gloves, but I'm allergic to latex and I'm not quite sure, you know, um, how heat or, you know, cold resistant just regular latex gloves are. So what I did is I have a curling wand and a thermal glove that comes with it. So thermal gloves, they work for hot or cold temperatures. So I use that to um, lift everything up. So there's a centerpiece to the can canister where your sperm vial is. So you're going to very carefully lift it up and it's just this middle um, holding rack, but it's the shape of a ruler, but with little like spines on it so that it can hold on to your sperm vial very, very tightly. Um, so I went on and I pulled it up uh, with my free hand that did not have a glove on it because that portion is not cold and it's the portion that was sitting outside the canister a bit. Um, so I was able to pull that up and then very carefully pull out the little spine part. I hate saying that, but the little, you know, long piece that holds your sperm vials, it can hold several sperm vials. So if you do have multiple that you're trying to use, obviously you're not gonna use multiple on the same day unless, you know, you and your partner are both trying to get pregnant at the same time. Um, but typically you're not gonna use both of them. So you wanna put it immediately back in the dry ice and close it up um, after you've retrieved the one sperm vial that you need. So retrieve that sperm vial. It really wasn't too, too cold for me to touch with my bare hand, but I really recommend that you be very careful when you do that, just so that you are not touching the metal or anything else like that. When it comes to that sperm vial, um, you will need to rub off some of the ice that's on the vial just so you can triple check and make sure that this is your sperm donor. So it'll say it on there. And so I triple check that. Um, so after I freed the sperm vial from the holding stick, I put the stick back in the cryo tank and sealed it all up. Um, so from there, I went on and I let my vial sit 
And unfortunately, for some reason, I'm having like a brain fart, so I can't remember exactly how long the sperm sat for. I want to say it was about 15 to 20 minutes. That's the window, but I will have the entire steps down in the description box below, including the time. So, you know, just so y'all know. Um, so I want to say it was about 15 to 20 minutes of it just sitting out at room temperature. And so you're able to tilt the vial a little bit, you know, see that it's moving. The, the sperm is in a liquid state at this point. Um, so from there, you want to either, you know, roll it in your hands, put it in your bra or put it in your armpit, whatever, for the next three to five minutes so that it can come up to body temperature. You want those spermies to be body temp. So I tuck mine underneath my arm and just let it sit. I was FaceTiming my friends at the time. So yeah, like FaceTiming my friends. And I think I was also like texting my mom to give her updates. <laughs> but um, yeah, so once it was on body temp, mind you, before I even did all of this, and I probably should have said this at the very start, before I even took out my sperm vial or anything, I made sure that I got the needleless syringe that they gave me. And I went on and I opened it up and I pumped the plunger several times to make sure I broke that airlock seal on it. Um, and you know, make sure it was set and I put it right back in the uh, packet that it came in. So that was sitting out and ready to go on the desk. And um, so yeah. Once my sperm vial was heated up to my body temperature, I was able to unscrew the cap. I put the sperm, um, the syringe, all the way to the base of the sperm vial, which is not a far way to go, but still, I went until I felt the bottom. And then I pulled the plunger back until it was full, which it's a little bit of sperm, like the size of my pinky nail, okay? But because that's a very thin syringe, like one of the OG insulin syringes before they had the like pre-done ones. Um, yeah, it's like a really small syringe because it's so small and it measures in milliliters, it filled it all the way up. So who knew? Who knew? I was surprised. And I double checked to make sure I got every last bit of liquid in that syringe. Um, so from there, you want to lay on your back, make sure you have some pillows underneath your pelvis to raise it up at an angle. Um, and you can also, you know, uh, feel inside and make sure that your cervix is tilted, you know, feel around. But if you're not a gynecologist or you're just not familiar with what a cervix feels like when it's tilted versus when it's not, um, skip that step. I skipped it. Um, so yeah, I just made sure I had enough pillows to tilt my pelvis up so it was elevated. And I went on and um, plunged a syringe and I put it in, I basically applied it like you would a tampon. If you know how to put in a tampon, you know how to inseminate yourself. Um, it really is the same motion and everything. So you just make sure it's securely in and then hit the plunger, make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. And I just let it sit for a while in there just in case like any swimmers where it left. And one thing that you are going to want to do, by the way, if you are my family member and you are watching this video, this is about the time you want to mute or <laughs> disappear. Um, I'll give y'all a moment. All right, so um, yeah, so once the sperm is inside, you are going to want to bring yourself to orgasm. The more orgasms that you have, the better, because that orgasm will allow your uterus to, or your cervix to tilt and dip into the pool of sperm that's now inside and really capture the sperm so that it can uh, make its way up a lot easier. Um, and then after that, you wanna lay down for, I believe they said maybe like 20 minutes or a half an hour or something like that. But um, I went on and I laid down for 45 minutes, made sure I ate dinner, and then um, I cleaned everything up and I just called it an early night. So I was probably walking around for like a good 
10 or 15 minutes before I just went back and laid down and just watched a movie for the rest of the night to let everything settle. I didn't have any leakage, but they do warn you that you may have some leakage. So they say that it's seminal fluid, but it's not the actual sperm itself because that's, you know, stuck inside. Um, but if you do have leakage or you're afraid of leakage, um, or if you, even if you aren't afraid of liquid leakage, I do highly recommend that you do a lay a towel out, um, just so, you know, you can catch everything. I didn't have any, so the towel, I used it anyways, but yeah, we were fine. I think what helped was the fact that I did make sure that the syringe was all the way in. You know, obviously there is enough for me to hold it, but I made sure it was all the way in and I just left it in and let it sit for a little bit um, until after the climax and then I took it out and I didn't have any spillage. So I do highly recommend that. Um, it may not be necessary, but that's just what for me. I did get pregnant this way. So, you know, my only issue was being able to stay pregnant. But um, yeah, that's just kind of what worked for me though, y'all. Uh, let me know if you have any tricks that you did or anything else like that that you did. Um, I will say some of the vitamins that I did take and I need to get back to taking uh, so that it's all nice and in my body is just um, the over-the-counter stuff where that was recommended to me was the prenatal pills and CoQ10. Um, but and also B12 and vitamin D. So I know the prenatal vitamins will have B12 and vitamin D in them, but if you are a woman in America, you probably have a vitamin D deficiency. That's just how my reproductive endocrinologist put it to me. So she recommended that I take more vitamin D um, if you're on Clomid or, um, I can't remember what the other one's called. I just know Clomid. Um, but if you're on any other vitamin, uh, like trigger shot or hormones or anything like that, I definitely recommend you talk to your doctor. Also talk to your doctor before you take any of these other vitamins and see if it's even necessary. Because I know for the very least, the CoQ10 should not cost as much as it freaking does. Um <laughs> And that's over the counter. So I highly recommend that you talk to your doctors and just get their opinion. See if that may help. See if you even need it. Uh, typically, they're going to look at your prenatal labs that you have before you start trying to conceive and let you know what supplements you should take and what actual prescription drugs that you need to take. So that is that. Uh, if you have any questions, though, please let me know down in the comment box down below. If I missed anything, also let me know. Um, either just add it in the comment box or if you want to, if you have more questions and you want another video, please let me know what you're interested in and I will go ahead and do that for y'all. But yeah, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like this video comments most obviously and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single week when I upload and I will see you all Sunday.